Representing the State Board of Education, this year's president, Mrs. Cheryl Hymas. Cheryl. I'm extremely pleased to be here for this particular occasion. Over the years, I've been concerned that uh, Idaho's educational community, as well as the whole state, needed a theater like this. And I can attest to the fact that our capital city's art awareness and development is essential to the rest of the state's awareness. I'm a native Idahoan and a Boise State graduate, and I know that... <laughs> Cheryl had to say that about me. Her husband and I are roommates from 25 years ago. <laughs> Mr. Tony Lon, student body president, Associated Students, Boise State University. Tony. Uh, when they asked me to th speak, uh, I thought that they were kind of hard up for speakers, but looking at the guest list and the speaker list, I'm quite honored to uh, be a part of this. Uh, we, the students of Boise State University, are pleased to share in the groundbreaking ceremonies for the Morrison Center. We also feel it's the most appropriate place to have the Morrison Center, here at the place of expanding horizons. We as students also thank the people that have made this possible and for the opportunity for Boise to expand its commitment to the performing arts. Thank you. Before we have our final speaker, uh, John Kennedy in 1960 at a gathering after his inaugural address said, perhaps we have here, among the 200 delegates from all over the world, Charles de Gaulle, France, and other nations, the ga greatest gathering of minds and influential people since Thomas Jefferson last dined alone. <laughs> As you look throughout this room, those of us who have participated for the last 10 years must realize that we've been privileged to be a part of it. A privilege of saying that art is essential and it's of magnitude that can never be measured. And the minds and the influence and the type of speakers we have today certainly is one of those great moments in Idaho history. Before Velma speaks, I would like John Kaiser and Ralph Comstock to join, join her, please, in the front of the podium. This is for the archives. This is what Fred wrote. So to present. <laughs> okay. To, to present John Kaiser and to our friend Ralph Comstock Jr. and the University Community Arts Association. May the Morrison Center for the Performing Arts offer that lasting memory of what a community working with pureness of motive can do. Knowing that this Center for the Arts will express the quality of life is truly enhanced when an art form is the best that art can be. So on this day of the 12th day of October, 1981, the Harry W. Morrison Family Foundation are proud to be a part of the Advancement for the Arts for an enrichment of Boise's cultural community for years to come, and praying that the integrity of Mr. Morrison's dream is never forgotten. Respectfully, with appreciation and love, Belma Morrison. From a group of friends to Velma, to Ralph, and to John, we have three plaques that go something like this with the name of each individual. This one's to you, Velma. 
Some men see things as they are and say, why? I dream things that never were and say, why not? If one man doesn't do it, who will? If not now, when? With respect and appreciation for your leadership in making a dream come true, groundbreaking, Morrison Center, October 12, 1981. Ralph, Velma, John, you've given us the leadership. God bless. speech by saying it's such a beautiful day outdoors and we can see all the beautiful colors in the trees that uh, Mother Nature's uh, fantastic paint brushes painted for us to see and we still see the beautiful trees and we do have a lovely city of Boise but uh, the man upstairs is give us a little gentle rain but that's all okay also because I heard that it's easier to use the shovel that way <laughs> Today, these groundbreaking ceremonies certainly are a highlight in all of our efforts in the past 10 years. I suppose nothing can ever be accomplished without any obstacles first. So we have so many ups and downs with the Morrison Project, but in the all, we knew that the Morrison Center was too right to be wrong. My late husband, Harry, had a dream to build a performing arts center in his beloved Boise, in the city of Idaho. And he was a very musical kind of person because he loved to go to plays and to um, musical comedies whenever we were in uh, New York City. That was the first thing that they always got tickets for him, especially the Rockettes. He really liked to see that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the number one on the program. But he did not live long enough to see this dream come true, so he left it for you and I to complete. Um, however, with the help of so many of you here in this audience today, and because of you, the dream is being fulfilled. Most important, I feel that the dream is feeling filled with integrity and honor that would make Harry very proud of all of us. Mr. Morrison's sister, Mrs. Edna Allen, just had her 99th birthday just this past Saturday, and we had a small gathering at her house, and I know that she is very, very happy about this very special occasion today. On November the 6th, no, that was that day, back in 1975, on the eve of the city election for the bond uh, issue for the Morrison Center, we knew that it was gonna be a great evening for celebration, so we asked, have a, little uh, buffet supper. We had televisions, everybody bought their own little portable and we had them in every room in the house, even the bedrooms and all, even the bathroom maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and the television, they were getting the counts and, and listening to the returns as they come in. And in the beginning of the evening, the, it sounded so great, we were all happy and very joyful. But as the evening progressed, I could see that different ones become very disturbed and worried and their smiles turned very solemn. So nevertheless, we didn't win that bond election that night. And uh, we were terribly disappointed, and there was a lot of heartbreaks in the house. And I remember very well Katie, she just broke down and cried, my little friend. I don't know where she is. She's there somewhere, I'm sure. And I remember so very much the heartbreak that we all had that night. And it was, it was really bad. And so a little part later in November, I decided I was going to leave town, and Fred said he'd take me to the airport. And he wanted to be very cheerful and said, well, you know, things aren't always that bad. Things will happen better in the, you know, give it a little more time. They just weren't ready for this building. <laughs> anyway, and speaking about... <laughs> And we were talking a little bit about Fred Norman. I think my girl ahead of me took my speech. <laughs> Fred needs to be recognized here today. 
Let me inject some adjectives that I think describe Fred Norman. He is a gentle, kind, quiet, and modest person. He is a cornerstone of this Morrison Center. He is the number one person above all of us that motivated and encouraged us to not let down our objectives for the building of the Morrison Center, but kept the faith for us. Without his continued guidance, this building would not have become a reality, and we would not be holding these ceremonies today. Fred is the one person in the last 10 years who worked diligently, always confident that the Morrison Center was too right to be wrong, and that is his quote. He is an artist, a humanitarian, and one who is always con concerned for all the people. I only wish that his two wonderful sons, Scott and Lance, could be here with their father today because I know that this is a happy day in Fred's life with the rest of us. Today, history is being made in Boise, Ada County, and the state of Idaho. And on behalf of the Morrison Family Foundation, let me thank everyone who had made contributions to the Morrison Center, be it time or material. I would like to especially thank the following, the legislature of the state of Idaho, particularly Mrs. Edith Miller Klein, the University Community Arts Association, those 800 plus workers who so diligently worked on our original campaigns, and the wonderful cast of Oklahoma, Jack Burrell, Side by Side, and Vaudeville Revisited. God bless each and every one of you. I love you all, and thank you very much. Before we conclude, Mel, would you play another number? And then we are going to have the groundbreaking. So we have a few more minutes, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> 